Well, welcome to our cupboard of gubbins. As you can see, this is our combined plant room in a new barn with a private borehole water supply, which uh, traditionally we've had to soften using salt tablets. But due to the tightness of the fit in here and the combination in a cupboard with all the electrics, I'm reluctant to retrofit a salt unit, even a cartridge salt unit, into this uh, barn. So what we've purchased as a trial is an LP2000 from the Little Plumber, an electronic scale treatment device. It's supposed to be easy to fit. It uh, has two coils that I'm going to wrap around our mains water supply into this barn, which is here. That's our main stopcock coming across from our treatment area in the plant room adjacent. Now the reason we're going for this design is twofold. One, the tightness of this uh, cupboard and not wanting to bring salt either in a cartridge form or certainly in a traditional bag form because it's so messy. But also because this water supply has to be uh, multifunctional. It's got to feed the boiler, which we don't want to put softened or salted water into. And also it's got to be drinkable and it feeds through into both cold and hot supplies. So we're looking at something that's significantly going to reduce the scale build up because our water is very hard. Now I'm going to demonstrate the hardness of the water. I've just drawn this out of one of the taps. We've got some 14 in one water testing strips, which we're going to use to demonstrate this. These are very simple, easy things to use and give you a, a 14 parameter test. You read these at uh, the times for reading them are actually on here but it's usually 30 seconds and uh, most of them should line up with the negative colours right down that uh, far left hand column with the exception of the hardness one which is the third one up here. You can see that that's right into the scale here, that brown colour on the third pad up. I mean, our pH is coming out at around 7.6. Total alkalinity, again, is very high on this water. But it's the hardness here that we are looking at. And the match there is the first one in the red. Tallies up with about 125 on here. Now, this water is full of calcium carbonate, chalk, basically, that's dissolved into it. And the whole purpose of fitting this bit of kit is to try and take that out of solution in the actual pipes and it will form a precipitant whitish powder that forms and will wash out with the, the water but that should stop it forming within the pipe works, within the boiler, within these two immersion heaters which are probably for the majority of the time going to run off uh, the electricity uh, for heating the majority of the water. They are actually both tied into the, the oil boiler here but uh, we've got solar panels on site and we like to use the immersion heaters as the main water heating fuel for, well, from around March through to the end of September, if we can do. So let's get this baby out of the box, have a look and uh, try and get it fitted. Well, here's what you get out of the box, uh, the LP unit itself with its clear perspex tab, a couple of uh, LED lights on the top there. The two connecting uh, ports for these wires, which are what you wrap around the actual copper or plastic tubing that you're wishing to treat the water in. The power for this unit is on a, a USB. But they also do supply a standard UK three pin plug with a USB output, but I've got a power USB wall socket here which I'm probably going to use for this if the cable is long enough. It does have to stretch beyond all this uh, pipe work and you've also got some wall fittings for putting this in place. The idea is that you wrap these cables around the copper or plastic pipe first off and then fit them into the unit. So let's just see how long these are. They are quite long two cables, a red and a black. If I separate them out, quite tricky to do. There we go, there's one cable. 
So I'm going to have a go at uh, wrapping this cable around this pipe, which is where the water comes up. That is my uh, main stopcock valve. I may end up putting one round here and the second one just behind these uh, power cables at the top. We'll see if we can mount the actual unit on the wall just in behind there. Let's see how we get on. Well, I've started wrapping this uh, cable round. The, the plastic cable ties, the uh, self-locking things are very good. You get four of those and uh, once you get your first cable round, if you put the cable tie round, it holds it in place and enables you to then continually feed the loop around this one. So I'm going to continue around then and put the final cable tie on the other end when it's all in place. Well, here is the unit in position. It's a little fiddly to film in here and to actually fit it, but luckily plumbers left me just enough space behind this main input feed to feed all those uh, cables and the plugs. And you can see now we've got the unit in place and powered up. We've got a red power light permanently on and the two um, circuit lights will flash continuously blue to indicate that they're powered up and working. All I've got to do now is affix this onto the wall, tidy up the cabling. I'll snip off the uh, tails of those ties and it should be good to go. Well, is it going to make any difference to our water hardness straight away? I've run the tap to draw any water that's still sitting in those pipes out. So anything that's coming through here should now have gone through that water treatment. So let's just have a look. Any difference in perceivable hardness on the scale? None at all. Still coming through at 1.25. Can't see any change in that at all at 30 seconds. So uh, time will tell. I'm not entirely sure whether these electronic treatments will change the overall hardness in the water or whether they're still going to be picking up that calcium carbonate if it's still uh, in the water but uh, precipitated out. Interesting to find out. I mean the test of this is going to be on the shower screens uh, provisionally on the uh, inside of kettles, things like that. That's where you're going to notice this difference. And because we haven't been using any of those to date, we're probably not going to see much of a change over the course of the next few weeks on those because this barn isn't currently in operation. But I'm going to retest this water after a couple of weeks. We'll continue to draw water through the system and see just how effective this little electronic water softener turns out to be.